In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a two-page shopping cart using the software available at landingcart.com, which was created by NutraSites.com and NutraHost.com. The first thing we're going to do is generate our contact form to collect the customer shipping address and billing information. That is done inside the extension, inside the back end of the software. Inside the software, there's a tab called Landing Cart. Under that tab is the contact form. First we're going to set the width to 100 and this is all um, customizable to fit your needs but for this testing purposes we've already done this once and we're going to set the width to 100. So now our button image, we're going to choose our button that the customer clicks on. We've already uploaded two images. This will be the first image and the second image is close to the first image but it's a little bit darker so it'll show a rollover effect. Now we're going to generate our contact form. So once it's generated, all we do is click and copy. And then we just need to open up our landing page. Now we've already created our landing page, and here's a sample right here. Now we're going to paste this code that they gave us inside this area right here. And that area is right here inside of the form ID. So we're going to paste that in and hit save. And we come back in, refresh, and there's our form. Okay, since we've already added the contact form, the next thing we need to do is add our products to our checkout page. Inside the back end of the software, underneath catalog, is a products tab. We'll click on the products tab, and there's our two products we've already added. We can go ahead and add another one just to show you how it's done. Choose the product name. Choose a meta tag. And go to the data and we choose a picture for this product. Um, since we've already uploaded our two, we'll just use this one again as a as a demo. And we pick a model number, we'll say test three. Price, we'll set this one at two hundred dollars. The shipping charge will be five dollars. So we can save that, and now we've added our products. Okay, now we're going to set up our terms and conditions for our checkout page. Our terms and conditions is located right here, right above what would be the payment button. This is what the customer must agree to before the checkout will allow the process. So inside the back end of the store, underneath the catalog, is the information tab. We click on that and we have our terms and conditions. We can click on this and inside here is where we can put our terms and conditions for the purchase. And we can save that. Now if we go back to the extension and go to the checkout page creator and click on the terms and conditions we can choose which page we would like to use for the terms and conditions. But since we already have one called terms and conditions, we're going to choose that one. And just make sure we hit save. And now we can go back to the checkout page and refresh and click on our terms and conditions and see this is where, where it shows up. Now we're going to set up our payment system for our landing card extension. Inside the back end, you want to go to the authorize.net tab or inside the PayPal Pro on the checkout page creator underneath the extension landing cart. For this demo we're going to use authorize.net. So we'll click on the authorize.net tab, complete this information provided to you from your authorize.net account. For this purpose we'll just put in some test information. Now if we go to the checkout page and refresh this here, right above our payment form there's some area up in here. We're going to put a title up here and we're going to put a banner image right underneath of it and that can be done over here on the Your Package tab where you also need to pick which payment system you want to use. So you can complete all information available on both tabs and then pick which one you want to use if you want to switch back and forth between PayPal Pro or Authorize.net. Now for the title we're going to put step number two place your order now and we'll choose our banner image We'll choose the credit card image and we will save that. 
and then we'll go back into the checkout and we'll refresh. And you can see we now have our title and our banner image. Now we're going to add a payment button to our checkout page. If we go to the checkout page, you can see there's a section here for a button to show up right here. And to put our payment button there to activate this form, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the back end under the landing card extension underneath the checkout page. We're going to go to the button tab. We're going to choose our first image. So this is the first image that's going to show up. We'll use this lighter colored order now button. And then we'll go to the second image, which will roll over once hovered. So we'll go in here and pick the darker image and save. Then open up the checkout page and refresh. Now we have our order button, and now you can see the rollover effect that comes with it. Now that we've added our payment button, we can go into the back end of the checkout page creator, and we can add in some more content above this area and below this area, and then we can use some CSS styling uh, to make our form look a little bit better and match our current landing page that we have. So we go into the back end. We've already gone over the terms and conditions, the Your Package tab, the PayPal Pro tab, the Authorize.net tab, the Product tab, and the button tab. The last two tabs we have are division and CSS. Now to get a better understanding of what these two tabs are, if you click on the CSS tab and scroll all the way down, we have a click to view and hide the map of division locations on the checkout page. If you click this, you can see that this is a demo of what is available and where you can add content and CSS styling on the checkout page. So if you look at this and we go back to the checkout page, those divisions are hidden inside of here. So our first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some content above our payment form and our cart. So in division number one, so we can come up here and since we're on the CSS tab, this is only CSS for division number one. So we want to go to division tab and division number one. Now we can type in whatever we want here. For example, um, this is a test. We can save this, then open up the checkout page and refresh, and you can see this is where that information shows up. But what we're going to do is put in some sort of um, product warning showing that uh, the low stock levels or something similar to that effect. So what we're going to do is go back to our checkout page creator. We're going to delete this text, and then what we're going to do is I already had this form created once. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this text that I've already created. We're going to copy this. We go back to our checkout page creator. We're going to open up the code view of this division. And we'll just paste that in there. And then click Save. Now if we refresh, you can see we have our content up there, but it doesn't really it doesn't really fill out the page and it doesn't really, uh, it's not very noticeable. So let's go back into our checkout page creator and go to the CSS. And we'll go back to my little cheat sheet here. And we'll go back to, this is where I've already created some CSS for this. So what we're going to do is copy that CSS, go back into the checkout page, and we're going to paste that in there. And then we can save that. And then refresh. And then now we have a larger banner for division number one that makes more sense with our checkout page. So if we go back to the back end again and click on the CSS tab, and scroll down to our map, you can see we have a division number two is this orange area. Now we do not offer any text adding to this area, but what we can do is add the CSS of it. So let's create a container to box in our content here. So let's go back to our cheat sheet and we have division number two background CSS and this is just CSS that I've already I've already tested and came up with and it looks pretty good so we're going to go with that. So we're going to come up here to the CSS division two tab and paste that in. Click save and go to the checkout page and refresh. Alright so now we have our box around our content. So we can go back to the checkout page creator Go to the CSS tab, scroll back down to our view and hide map. You can see we have division three that runs right around our shopping cart. And here we can add text, images, and, and other CSS. So let's go to my sheet here that I've created before. Let's find division number three. Looks like I had an H1 tag that just says 
Step number one, choose your package options. So let's go ahead and go back to the back end. Click on division, and here's division number three. Step number one, choose your package option. We can highlight this. Let's make it an H1, and then let's center and click Save. Go back to our checkout page, refresh, and now we have our H1 header text above our cart. Now we can go back to the back end again, go to the CSS tab, scroll down to the view and hide map. Now we can add some more content to say to division number seven. Switch so division number seven is the purple area. So let's see. Let's go back to our division. Let's go down. We'll skip number six for right now and go to number seven. My cheat sheet here. Looks like we had a guarantee logo in that box. So let's come in here, click in here, add a picture, and click on our guarantee logo that we uploaded earlier. And then let's save this. Sorry, let's center this and then we'll save it. And what we're also going to do is add another image to division number six. And division number six is located just below the payment form. So we can click on add a picture. We're going to use this USPS logo. Shrink it down a little bit. And click on it and center and save. And go back to the checkout page and refresh. All right, so now we have our guarantee image there, and we have our priority mail USPS logo underneath our form. Now there's still some CSS work that needs to be done, so let's finish up with some other divisions. So if we go to CSS tab, scroll down, you can see that we have what looks like division number four is the large box around the checkout page. So we can add CSS to this, but we can't add any text. So let's go back to our sheet we created earlier. Let's find our CSS page, or sorry, our CSS page for division number four. And this just has a border, um, some padding, some color uh, for the font, um, some margin to keep the this image right here to move it down a little bit to put a little more space between these two. And then um, we have uh, basically a background gradient using a CSS background generator. So let's just uh, copy that. And come in here in division number four, we'll paste that in. Hit save. Go to our checkout page and refresh. Okay, now we have our division filled in with this green background and some space between the form and this priority mail image. Now we still have some more work to do here, so let's go ahead and go back to our little cheat sheet. We have, uh, looks like division number eight, we had the CSS at a margin of 20. So let's go to the CSS tab, division number eight. We'll set that margin top to 20, and the reason why we are doing that, right now there's nothing in division eight. But as soon as we add something to Division 8, you'll see why we need to do that. So let's go ahead and add a picture. We're going to add this row of um, icons and seals we have here. So let's center this. So that margin of 20, all this is going to do is add some space above this division so it's not right up against the uh, division number 7 or division number 2. So let's save that. Go to the checkout page and refresh. Okay, so now we have our icons at the bottom of our page. Now we still have some more work to do to our cart because this is a little hard to see so let's fix that. Let's go back to our checkout page creator. Looks like we have all of our divisions filled in so that's good. Let's go to our CSS. Looks like we have some division 3 CSS here. Let's see what we've already tested and done with this. Looks like we're going to change the background to white and the border radius to 8 to give it a round, rounder edge. So let's paste that in and save. Go back to the checkout page and refresh. Alright, so now we have a white box around our checkout page, but we still can't see the, the text 
in this area. So let's uh, let's go back to our sheet here and scroll down and it looks like what we have left to do is our custom CSS. Now the custom CSS is the CSS that we can add in right here at the bottom of the CSS tab. It's in this area right here. Now this CSS is page-wide CSS. If you look up here you can really only add the um, you can't add the full CSS for let's say a division um, that's not listed here or a class that's not listed here you can really only add um, the feature of, of the style so what we want to do down here is we can actually add in our own custom CSS like we can change the background image to white um, we can uh, change some of the the table of the cart to give it different colors and center um, we're going to change by adding this in here this is going to change our links to black because if you look right now on the checkout page you see this is blue so it makes it stand out a little bit more wide we'll black and this is really only text on this page that is a link so when we come back in here to our sheet we can copy all of this and this this sample data will also be available to download so we can paste that information in here and we'll save that go back to the checkout page and refresh okay so that CSS that we did is what what fixed the font colors um, and we can go back in and play with that a little bit so you can see what's happening if we go to the CSS tab and scroll down let's see uh, we have our background here so let's make this instead of being white just for purpose of uh, seeing how this works we'll change that to yellow and this is going to look awful but you'll see the the purpose of uh, how it all works. So it changed our background to yellow. And you can use images also for background images if you need to. We can come down here and we can add in. Let's change that back to white. And you can see the other CSS we have in here is this is for uh, the, the checkout division number five label. So this is making um, the label in division number five, this is going to make it white, um, which division number five is going to be over in here. So this is going to show up white, which it already was white anyway, but uh, so that actually piece of code could probably be removed and it would be fine. Um, the choose packet color, so we have, you know, we have some uh, custom CSS in here to fit the theme, um, the table header we had changed to the the blue to match the landing page we changed the font color to white and made the font size 17 um, division number 3 h1 we added a background to it so that's what this is right here we added this green background to kind of make it match up with this one we set the border radius to 4 uh, the final total row looks like we made that green and um, and that's just right here so this would be green and stand out a little bit more so now when the customer Let's refresh this though before we go to the next step. We've made our background white. Let's save that. Come back in here to the checkout page and refresh. So we can come in here and we can see what the customer sees from step one to step two of the checkout page. So they're going to come in here and they're going to go to your landing page. And we've already created the form. So we can do test, test, test at test.com. One, two, three, test, street, test, bill, Ohio, three, 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 three. phone numbers, two, three, two, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, and they can click select my package, and it carried that data from that form over to this form, so all they really have to do from here is choose their package option that they want, put in their payment information, agree, and then click the order now button and the customers all the way gone through the checkout process so if you have any questions about this you can visit nutrahost.com nutrasites.com and you can get some information off of landingcart.com